Welcome to Hustle and Pro Season 2, talking sports in Frisco from youth to pro. Now here's your host, Kelly Walker. Today on Hustle and Pro, FC Dallas defender Ryan Hollingshead joins us again. But today we're talking about his career, uh, the unique nature of his rookie season with the MLS. Um, we're also going to talk about the serious accident that derailed his career and now having a standout season here in 2020. Welcome, Ryan Hollingshead. Ryan, who is your favorite athlete of all time? Oh, my gosh. That is that is so tough. It uh, is. If you need to pick more than one, that's fine. Athlete of all time. I would say I think Roger Federer is my favorite athlete of all time. LeBron James as well. Those are two, two uh, of my my like heroes in the sports world and partly because of how dominant and how good they are at their their craft at their yeah. sport but partly too because they're just stand-up guys like Roger Federer has to be the most well-loved athlete of all time or at least up there with the few of them because of the way he handles himself off the court as well and then LeBron James is one of the guys that just is such like a faithful husband faithful father those sorts of things that I'm like uh, I love when a player is not only exceeding on the court, but off the court. And both those guys do so exceedingly well. Do you have any sports superstitions? I mean, I have like a, yeah, kind of, I try to, <laughs> I try to not be superstitious, but like I have the same pair of shin guards that I've been wearing for the last 10 years. And they're, you know, they're only like six inches long. They're oh, tiny. They barely even gosh. work, but 10 years yeah but i will not ever play a game I'll, yeah i need to i need to show you a picture of them or something yeah they're oh i can imagine i after. i live with soccer players my husband still plays recreationally and um my son plays i yeah. can imagine how beat up they are and i can't imagine they smell great um and <laughs> they can't have much padding they left in them. They do they even do much anymore they don't not super helpful but that's probably the biggest one the other one is just like you know, you have a game day routine, taking a nap, eating the meals in a certain time and stuff like that. But that that's the shin guards is probably my biggest superstition. Yeah. You guys are probably off that routine. Your routines had to be altered a little with flying to away games to game day instead of overnights. So that's probably some another adjustment y'all are having to uh, figure out in 2020, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we've we've been flying in the day of and flying out immediately after the games to avoid all of this uh, COVID stuff. And so it's thrown off a little bit, but I still I fight for all of the I try to keep the routine as, as similar as I can. Yeah. OK, this one's easy. What's your favorite sports movie? Oh, there's there's probably a couple Miracle, Mighty Ducks, Rocky. Those are probably like a few that just come those came to my mind immediately oh, wow i think that. you're i think you're 80 episodes in and you're the first i think you're the first one who said rocky for sure Ro uh, rocky is class oh my that's gosh a good one. Yeah. yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome all right i'm curious i think i read that you were a two-sport athlete or a multi-sport athlete in high school so when i talk to professional athletes um i'm always curious how how many sports you played up to what age and level and when you decided to focus on the sport that you ended up playing for a career? Oh man, that is such a hard question because I, I love, like I'm so competitive. If you put anything in front of me, that's competition. And I'm talking like card game, you know, a different sport, tennis, basketball, soccer. Uh, I mean, I turn like everything into a competition you know, if I finish an empty water bottle, I have a game with myself where like I have to find the closest trash can and try to shoot it from wherever I'm standing into the trash can. Like everything, when you're competitive, everything becomes competition. Yeah. So it's hard to really focus on one or the other. I think for me, it just came down to which one I was most successful at was the one that I was enjoying the most. So what'd you play so, in high school? Yeah, so I played tennis uh soccer and basketball in high school okay and i i i think i i love all three of those sports really really enjoy them i was best at soccer for sure uh understood the game most soccer and i was playing soccer since i was like three years old whereas tennis i picked up when i was maybe eight or nine mm -hmm. and basketball kind of same thing i picked it up later and so i had a comfortability with the game of soccer 
um, from an early, early age that I didn't have with those two other sports. I think that obviously there's star athletes that are at the best on their team, wire to wire, and they just, they're always the best on their team. But then I think a lot though, um, you're, you're a mid to, to better player on your team and you kind of have to fight and stay good, but not maybe always the best throughout, you know, high school and if you play in college and beyond. So where, where would you put you on all of your youth teams up through the college level? Yeah, I was, I was exactly that. I always, when I was young, I played up a couple years because I played with my older brothers on their teams. And so I was always like middle of the pack for that, for those times. But I was also playing with kids that were two or three years older than I was. Um, and then when I went to my own age team, I was the best player on the team up until about high school. And then with, with high school and with like puberty and, and boys growing at different ages and stuff, so many things changed during that time. And so I was a late bloomer. Like I hit puberty late and I was getting surpassed by kids that were hitting puberty earlier and becoming faster and stronger and bigger. And then as soon as I began to grow as well, uh, I kind of caught back up. You know, I was not the U.S. national team player that was uh, always coveted and everybody wanted me from day one. I was always the best player. I had a ton of ups and downs, and it took a lot of perseverance and fighting. And, again, like I said, I was so competitive that there were just – at any time, if I wasn't the best, I was always asking the question of why am I not the best? Who does something better than I do? And how can I start doing that thing – better myself and, and, and start beating them in that thing. Yeah. So the ups and downs you mentioned, obviously that happens throughout um, probably your high school and college career. But I mean, you've had some serious ups and downs or not really all ups and downs, but some, some interesting bumps in the road um, in your pro career. When you were originally drafted, you skipped your rookie season to build a church with your brother. Is this true? Yes, yes, that is a true story. So uh, my brother and I had been talking about planting a, a Christian, non-denominational, like Bible teaching church in our hometown and outside of Sacramento where we grew up. And so it came down to like, which, which of the two did I want to do and which one did I want to do more? And I chose the church and, uh, and my brother and I kind of built that thing from the ground up. And uh, luckily... The, the organization here with FC Dallas continued to reach out to me through that time and, and continued to offer me to come back out and play. And so about a year later, I was able to come back out and play soccer. But it was a, it was a crazy experience. I wouldn't change it for the world. My brother and I um, had a blast, and it was incredibly difficult to start that church, but it was so fulfilling. Um, but, the, but God was faithful, and I was able to end up doing both in the end, which, which I'm really grateful for. That's amazing. You probably thought or you probably had people telling you you're crazy for not jumping on the opportunity you had to, to start your pro career right away. But that's amazing that you, that you made that decision and you made them both work. It's great. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was crazy to turn down the potential of becoming a professional athlete, especially because there was no guarantee that the contract would be on the table six months or a year later or whenever it was. It was kind of like right. a take it or leave it type of deal. Um, but I, yeah, I, I made the right decision and yeah. in the end it all worked out. So. It worked out. And then fast forward a couple years later, I don't know the exact timeline, um, when you had your accident, right? So um, you helped a car that was stranded on the side of the road, right? And then that, when you were out, another car came and hit you. Is this correct? Yeah, that's exactly correct. So I was helping, there was a crash in front of me when I was driving down the freeway. It was a icy road. Uh, it, it was snowing that night. And so all the roads were frozen over and I saw the car right in front of me getting an accident. And I pulled over to help them get out of their car because they were stranded in the middle of the freeway. And we, I got him out of his car. We were standing in the shoulder and I was just kind of asking him how he was doing, if he was okay, if he needed me to call an ambulance. And in that time while we were talking, a car came driving through the shoulder and hit me where I was standing and just like launched me down the freeway. And it was, uh, it was a really, really scary moment. Uh, I ended up breaking three bones in my neck 
um, and had to be like casted and immobilized and missed like, almost half a season because of it. Yeah. So I think 128 days later, you came back. Yes. Yeah. That sounds right. And that was due in a major part to my doctors and the staff I was able to work with. They were able to basically heal the three vertebrae in my neck without surgery, um, which surgery when it comes to your, when your comes to your spine means fusion. Which would limit range of motion and. Yeah, exactly. So they were able to heal that. So that was a major uh, factor in me coming back in 128 days. And then as well, I was, you know, doing everything I could uh, from, you know, moving my legs while in, when a, in a bed and in a cast and trying to do like body weight squats and stuff like that to just speed up the process and get back as soon as possible. That's amazing. Like just hearing you talk about the accident itself gives me chills, but I want to tell you, I was, there was a training session back. I mean, that was what, 2016. When, when did you come back and start playing? Was that 16 or 17? Yeah, I got hit January of 16, I believe, and was back by uh, June of that same year. Okay. So, so then that June, that was back when um, I guess they would have open training where season ticket holders could come and fans could come watch. Um, but at, we were there one day on the sidelines, literally sitting on the grass on, like, I guess probably Advocare 1. We weren't in the stadium. And I don't know if it was like your first actual training back or what it was, but um, you had a lot of people on the sidelines. You had friends that were there, I think college friends or something and sitting near us. And it was like a really big deal touching to everybody on the sidelines to see you out there training and running and doing your thing. And um, I don't think you had a lot of minutes that day, but I think it was like really one of the first things that you were back out there. And it was, it was awesome. It was really cool to be there and watch you do that. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it really was. And I think because of like the unknown of what was going to happen, when I first broke my neck and was like laying in the middle of the street after getting hit, I was temporarily paralyzed for about a minute, just like sitting on the ground. I couldn't move any part of my body. Ooh. And so I, for a second, was like, oh, I'm like, I'm not only am I not playing soccer again, like, I'm not wrestling around with my kiddos. Like I'm not, I'm not, you know, driving, I'm not being an active parent in any way. Like this is going to be my life. And so going from that to then a minute later, like getting feeling back in my limbs and then, you know, four months later, 128 days later, being, being able to compete again at like the highest level, it was just this surreal roller coaster of what I thought could have been, to then being back on the field and honestly just renewed my love for the game and my, um, yeah, my thankfulness to be able to play the game I love for a living and have a body that works the way that it works. Because I think as an athlete, you know, your body is, you whip your body into shape and you have so much control over your body and um, you're able to do so many things with your body as a professional athlete and all that was just gone. Yeah. In an instant. Um, and here we are 2020. Yeah. And I feel like you, I mean, obviously you had some hiccups. You, you skipped that first possible season and then skipped half of a year, just trying to get back to physically being able to play. And I don't know if it was last season maybe, or the season before, but I feel like you had a turning point and you just became, um, you got more minutes, you became a starter on the team and a leader on the team. And now, you know, you're, you're a veteran and everybody kind of looks up to you and you're one of the main faces of the club, right? So do you feel that happened in 2018? Yeah, so after 2017, 2018 was a little bit of an up and down kind of bumpy year. I felt good, but it's not really wanting to go into tackles, afraid that just my neck couldn't hold up. Yeah. And so 2018 was kind of up and down, but it was 2019 that I was able to put in a ton of work in the off season and come in in 2019, just like focused and confident and uh, my body feeling better than it had ever felt before. And that's where things really changed, where I just kind of became like the the starter for, you know, the whole season and, and had a uh, like 
a confidence I think that I, I hadn't had before up until that point. And so, yeah, 2019 was really that year. And you're having a good 2020, even though it's weird and start and stop yeah. had its yeah. own strangeness to it. Um, yeah. so I have one more question for you. Since you are a parent, I mean, the guys on your team range range in age from, you know, kids finishing high school um, to to, I don't know, what is 32 or four? I'm not sure the oldest on your roster. I think Reto is the oldest and he's 34, I believe. Four, okay. Yeah. So that runs the gamut of, you know, really young kids. And then some of you guys who do have a couple kiddos already. Um, so how many kids do you have? Yeah, so I have two kids, uh, a four-year-old and a three-year-old, and then I have a foster baby right now who's 18 months old. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. So my question about that is, um, I'm always curious, your sports parenting style. Assuming your kids are, are going to dabble in sports, do you see yourself, since you're uber competitive, self-proclaimed, <laughs> do you see yourself um, – being oh, yeah. a, a, a loud soccer dad on the sidelines or will you try to chill out and just let them do their thing? Yeah, my wife and I have talked about this so many times already, more than we should have because our kid, our oldest is only four. So we're not even close to like real competitive soccer yet. But uh, I will be very, very quiet. I will not be involved as like a coach or anything because exactly as I've proclaimed, I'm way too competitive. And so – there's no in between for me. There's no like, there's no, uh, there's no middle ground where like I'm a little bit competitive but a little bit supportive. I either am all competitive and super fiery, or or just need to be kind of passive and supportive. So yeah. I'm gonna be not the coach. I will be at every game though. I I mean I I I want to be a part of everything they're doing, and so I want to be at all the games. I want to be there but I want to be really supportive and not competitive. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay on the sideline. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. It's hard, yeah. it's hard to yes. do, but you, like you said, once you commit to that, then you can, you know, show up knowing you're just, just going to be quiet and watch and enjoy it. You might have to take a page from the Abby Wambach parenting book where they would sit on the sidelines and um, have like a sucker or something in their mouth so that they just sat there quietly yeah. and didn't yell and make a scene. Yes get too yeah. involved in it and just sit there and remind themselves we're just we're just here on the sidelines it's not a pro soccer game yes there you go that'll be me well awesome well um that'll be really fun when your kids they're almost there they're probably already at the age where you can get them into into rec soccer like you said yeah. you started at three or four that's about when I started um and our kids yeah started. yeah that's awesome yeah our kid uh our oldest played like the YMCA league so yeah, that'll be fun for him to do again this year. Yeah, and it comes in, it, it gets there fast. I mean, as they work up through all the baby soccer and and then the fields get bigger at like seven and, you know, then they get to like 9v9 and goalies happen. And it's it's fun to watch them progress. We're at a U11 now and we just jumped into the FC Dallas um, club systems. Fun. Got it. That's awesome. Now my That's son awesome. has like what he thinks is the official kit just like you guys. So, yeah. Yeah. So he thinks he's big time. He wears it to your games and um, he's number 21. <laughs> so he's a, obviously he's a Mikey B fan, um, but yes. he's, he's 21 in all his sports. So he, uh, he sports his FC Dallas Jersey to watch you guys play. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's official. Thanks for your time. I know you're busy. I know that you just got off the field. And so I appreciate you zooming with us and giving us a peek into, into your uh, FC Dallas career. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.